Here we go. So welcome everyone to the Zoom Satsang at the Hedekunda Universal Ashram and all around the world. And we're grateful to have um, Hiraman from Washington, state of Washington, and um, Pujari from Russia um, with us today. And this is a particular satsang where we're hoping that everyone has the opportunity to ask questions about your practice or whatever. And so here we go. We begin with a question, I think, for Pujari about how, how it was. Oh, I, the question was about the picture that I posted. So I can just uh, frame that question. And Pujari was telling us about where the picture was taken, where um, Babaji was on his back. He was almost giving him like a piggyback ride. Go ahead, Pujari. Yeah, yeah, that's it's it's just a precious moment. It's one of the most precious pictures I have, of course, of uh, being with Babaji, because I was not so much in his close presence, because I was not really a Ghana always around Babaji. I was have mostly puja duties, but a big thing happened also in this picture, which is a memory, because it's uh, this picture where Babaji is leaning so beautifully on me. It was in Kedarnath, and that was a strong yatra. We went with Baba to Kedarnath and Badrinath. And uh, during that time, Babaji called me over just to make that picture in front of the temple. But also during that time, he really made me his pujari at one point. That uh, was a story that I was sitting in the tea shop with Ragu and Babaji was giving darshan close to the temple in a big hall. And then he said, where is my pujari? Where is my pujari? And then everybody go look for my, my pujari. So some people came running up to us. Yeah, yeah, Babaji's calling you. <laughs> so I had to run over and said, every morning, every evening, you have to do puja to me. So yeah. then I learned all the, yeah, the ritual stuff of how to do puja to Babaji with Muniraji's guidance, I must say. But that's where I got really a stamp that I was a pujari. And uh, from that moment, it was uh, slowly with Muniraji, I became the international pujari, but... As you know, Babaji also told me, as he was beyond time, he could see my past life. I was a Pujari, he told me, in South India, in a Ram temple. And that was my good karma to meet him. But if I see the picture and the, and the sweet memories of how in our purity and beauty we were uh, yeah, playing around Babaji, or he allowed us to be around him like that, Many times it was not so easy, but at, in that picture it shows I'm very relaxed and very easy and very pure and it's a, a beautiful moment, but also it shows something how Babaji is hanging on me and that has something very beautiful, but also sometimes it, it shows me inside something that I sometimes take Babaji a little bit heavy, like it's a burden almost, and that that is also something I slowly also got from that picture. Don't take him so heavy, no? He's just, he is just in you, all around you, but don't take him heavy. That's something I actually quite recently noticed when I saw that picture again. Uh, yeah, but the memory of being in Kedanat on a Yatra with Baba in that innocent, pure state and all the... Uh, Leelas and activities that went on, it's like... Baba tra transferred us to another loka. I don't even know how I managed to do that in the crowds to with my puja plates and stuff and the janeu and the kutuni and the whole mal and all, all the stuff and to crawl in front and to start his puja with Indians and with Muniraji around. It was quite a, I don't, if I think, how did I do that? It's like, it's really, he did it through me. He's, he's like, uh, or let me say, I was happily functioning mostly in a no mind state. That was the beauty of how you, we were with, but we were so surrendered. It doesn't matter where we are, what we do. You have your blanket and your mala, and there you go. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you go to Kedanat or stay home, everything goes uh, uh, by itself. And I didn't really have a wish. Also many times when Baba did travel, I stayed in the ashram later because I had pujari duties in the ashram. And often Gorari was also staying there. So we stayed behind while Babaji was going either to Bombay or on some other yatras. I often 
uh, kind of had to stay back in the ashram. But I enjoyed it also very, very much the quiet time that there was nothing going on in the ashram, just a few devotees. But anyway, that's enough about my picture. Let's go to Hiraman's picture, which is also very beautiful. He, it looks like he has a serious discussion <laughs> with Babaji. <laughs> Both were a lovely picture. And I just saw, uh, looking at the program of this program, what's uh, today's topic. So then, then I saw in the last hour or so. So I thought I have to ask this. <laughs> right, right. Well, thank you for asking, Avnish. But let's go to Hiraman's picture. That's also a beautiful scenery. Uh, I, is that the one by the river bathing? Yes. Right, okay. right, right. Yeah. Um, well, that was kind of one of my favorite times of the day with Babaji is I bathed with him every in the late afternoon. He would come and rescue me from whatever work project I was doing. And we just spent a lot of time together, sometimes just the two of us or sometimes with a few others. And and, uh, and the light in the in the valley was so nice then too. You know, it was like, Suns just before sunset and the their soft light and just a joy to be with Babaji. Like Pujari was saying, it it was effortless. Even if it, if there was a lot of effort in in living that life, being with Babaji was effortless at the same time for me. I didn't. It it was very easy um, because, like, you know, we had a blanket and a mala and <laughs> and, and it was simple. You know, and that was one thing that Babaji used to say to me a lot is, you're very simple. And, uh, and so I've kind of tried to keep it that way. Although my life sometimes isn't really simple, inside it still feels simple. So it can kind of seem, uh, Bhavana can probably tell you, it seems like a tornado around me sometimes, but <laughs> <laughs> inside it still feels pretty quiet and simple. It brings up yeah. two questions for me, if I can ask. Um, um, Pujara, you said, you know, that you're learning more about not taking Babaji too seriously. I think the word you use, or too heavy. Um, yeah. So can you elaborate more on that? Yeah, this... Uh... In my attitude, I sometimes I could feel that I'm I take him like a, a heavy load that I have to do something for him or I have to, uh, yeah. I take the duty somehow a little bit heavy that it's very serious and some in the past. I, I'm now I'm relaxing more, but I've had times that I took the duties very very uh, serious and. Uh, take the timings different. I every day had to do my pujas and my things. And I have times that I was very serious on the job. And sometimes I, take, I took a big load on me. And that's happened a few times in my life. Now, when I had quite five shops to run and, and then start of the ashram, I had a lot of workload that I, I loaded upon me. And with the ashram duties in Holland, it was sometimes also I just kept on feeling very responsible for everything. So uh, then it became quite heavy. And that's not supposed to be that that's something personal that you kind of you like Atlas, you try to carry the world, that kind of feeling that you feel so burdened by it. And at times I really felt burdened by that uh, emotionally, by the projections of people, by, about many situations in the ashram, and let's say judgments that came to me and appreciation, both everything comes to you, comes to you when you're quite in the center. As you know, Ramloti, the same thing for you. You get so much appreciation and at the same time, so much negativity projected on you. So that was also my experience in the, in the ashram. But I, I can say that it helped me incredibly to break through that point of, taking it as a burden, like Atlas oh is carrying the world. It's really, that's not what Babaji wanted. He wanted us to, he showed us how light and playful and he was kind of, how he was uh, showing us, <laughs> it's, it's uh, difficult to compare, but Babaji had such a lightness and joyfulness over him. 
except in the last half year, I must say, then it, for my feeling it really changed. But most of the time you see this joyous being uh, effortlessly playing with all his uh, devotees, or let's say just human beings and other beings and nature. He was just effortlessly doing that. That's why I say I had a long time. I'm coming close at the moment that it becomes effortless because also I don't want and I don't demand much from myself anymore. It goes more automatic, but I still love to sit every day with my little fire and I go for a swim and I go uh, for my little puja. I, I just, but it's not an, it's not heavy anymore. So that I come to that point that the heaviness is going out, but I, I have to say that it was a long time that I struggled with that, that I felt I felt it was a heavy job, what I was kind of doing for Babaji. And that's all egoic stuff that had to come to the surface and to see, but what is it? Uh, I want to be appreciated. I wanted to be loved. I wanted to be seen. All this basic psychology stuff that was still playing in me, I had to, I got to see all that and to, to, to let go of it as, a, as the clearer I could see it, the better I could just see that's really not what Babaji wants from me. It's something in my, my attitude is wrong here. And just by seeing it enough times, it melted away that it becomes more and more effortless and joyful as in the time of the picture that we were around Babaji. There were many obstacles, but we moved very playful and joyous because there was nothing to lose, nothing to win. We were with Babaji and it's still that way. Only sometimes my psychology in the last 30 years took over <laughs> in, a, in a heavy way. So that were just karmic, karmic stuff that I had to dig through and come back to that space. No, come on, Pujai, that can't be true. That's not what Babaji showed you. It was simple and beautiful and light and uh, you spoil the teaching if you take it heavy because that's not uh, how you can convey the message. It's more like the, the beauty and the playfulness. Uh, then you show much more of Babaji's uh, or you do Babaji's work in a better way. And I have that also a lot. Now you know me a long time and I also know that I have still quite a through all these years, kept that kind of playful uh, mode going, especially around Muniraj. He, he enjoyed it also a lot in me uh, that he could acknowledge that. But to, to stay simple and pure, uh, it's been a challenge because sometimes it got really clogged and then I had to really look, but what is it? Why does it get clogged? because I take opinions from others very serious or I, I blame myself because I didn't do it perfect or I didn't do it quick enough or uh, it didn't come out how I want it. It is just same, all expectations. <laughs> to be in surrender, it's, it's uh, around Babaji it was easy, but you have, if you have a serious duty, it can become quite heavy soup. And that's, in my case, it became quite heavy soup. So I had to learn to let go. I had to learn to, to see that that is personality stuff. That is not what Babaji wanted, but it's just automatically coming out of me. Uh, and it, 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 it transformed itself by itself, by learning to stay more in, in the spirit with Babi to concentrate on that and to concentrate on the mantra and to let go and be not affected if people like me or don't like me, if they appreciate me, if I'm doing good or I'm doing not good. It is much more moment for moment uh, staying with that, that, that attitude of service. And in that way, Muniraji has been guiding me very much in saying always, just contemplate your day every day. Don't look at others. Just you have to look if you're doing okay. And that was the same with Babaji. We, I was not busy with Hiraman and I was not busy with Raghavir or with other people. We had so much our connection with Babaji and you were responsible for your duty. And at the same time, uh, such a family feeling arose between brothers and sisters that is for me still 
unexplainable how how that happened no Be without really putting much effort into relating to Ramloti or Hiraman or somebody else it just naturally developed as a as a deep loving family but and now I can see it's because the love in us was becoming stronger and stronger that if the love becomes strong you love everything and everybody you become a little little bit a sparkle of Babaji who was for him it was peanuts to love everything and everybody but we are of course sparkles from this so we have this capacity to love everything and everybody to be without judgment uh, and and transfer that no I leave it there. That, that's, I think that's what I've been learning from taking it heavy to say, no, that's not the thing. We were a sparkle of his loving, <laughs> non-judgmental way of, of being in life and celebrate. Yeah. Okay. Hirman, do you have more to say about the sparkle? <laughs> <laughs> that's, well, that's yeah. Not sure. That's great. The sparkle of Baba. <laughs> a yeah. sparkle of Baba. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, it, he leaves us feeling pretty sparkly, for sure. Uh, <laughs> I think also, for me, there's a, a profound non-doing, you know, even in the midst of action and karma, yoga, is it's not really us doing anything. And, and I, if, when you're in that place, then the time just goes and and you can make plans and everything, but you don't become so uh, attached to your plans that 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 you become the plan instead of just putting in the moments. So um, in that in that action with in a non doing action, we can really be in that place of um, just shining just letting the sparkle come through us and, and not, not worrying so much about uh, how well we did or if, you know, like Pujari was saying, if people appreciate what we did or we just, we just do. Uh, and it's really a non-doing because it's not even really us doing it. It's, uh, it's just us being in the moment and uh, doing karma yoga. And uh, for me, that is makes everything light in a way. Like one time I, I was thinking as Pujari was saying about heaviness is I was carrying Baba across the river and it was pretty high, like, and really kind of going pretty fast. And about two thirds of the way, I kind of thought I'm gonna dump Babaji in the river because it it was really starting to take my feet away and everything. And just, just as I thought that, I thought, what is it going to be like to dump the Lord in the river? You know? <laughs> and just as that happened, he became light as a feather, like totally like carrying a, not even like carrying a baby, just like no weight. And then just boom, we were right across. And so it's kind of like that for me. I, I think of that moment a lot. If, if things feel heavier than a feather, that <laughs> effortlessness comes back, you know, like, it really can be as light as a feather, no matter what we're doing and no matter how hard it is. If we just keep coming back to, um, it's not really us making the whole world work. We're just a small part of, of doing our best and, and it's not such a heavy burden. Yeah, I, I love what you say. Not a burden it's, it's, yeah, it, it's to not take it personal anymore. That's why. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Around Bob, I didn't take it very personal many times, although I, at times it felt very personal. But at the same time, it was very easy to go into this uh, field of presence where you feel that it's just happening. There's not even a choice if I am doing something or I'm not doing something. Just life is happening. And, and that's a very beautiful state. And I fully agree. This, this doership is all, often gets in the way. So... I think, but I had to learn that at times it's not there and at times it's very much there. So that's, that's the learning practice. And uh, I know how it is easy if, if the weight is gone, if Baba takes the weight away by putting us in our natural state, which is just effortlessly being here. Beautiful. So 
I think step by step, everybody gets, gets to experience it and gets to go there. Now, the true karma yoga is, of course, with great detachment, and there's not really somebody doing anything. It's just the tree is not making an effort to be a tree or to give apples. It's just the, the cosmic energy is, is handling everything through the tree or through us. But by making it personal, in mostly in our mind, we create so many heavy obstacles that it's, uh, yeah, it's like I'm a tree and I have to really be a tree. And, and that's, of course, ridiculous from a tree perspective. It's very ridiculous to say that the tree has, can do something or has to do anything. And the true karma yoga is when, when it falls away. That is just happens what happens and it's all destiny. And please don't take yourself or anybody else too serious because it's just a beautiful play orchestrated by God in which we are playing along. So enjoy, enjoy the beauty of this, this existence, uh, like Baba could say, enjoy the joy of life. No? It's, uh, it's, it shouldn't be a heavy soup here on this planet. There's really no need for it. So it's, it's uh, an inspiration how Baba Ji lived that joyful. I've, I know, I've not seen anybody who's capable to live so joyfully with all that energy around him as, as, as Babaji could dance or walk through the ashram or play with his devotees, even being in Delhi, just going up the stairs and all this heavy Delhi while had to go up the stairs and Baba went down the stairs and they all had to go down and Baba always <laughs> found something <laughs> to be, take everybody uh, out, of, out of normality, just being very playful. He, he is, master of this every day he played with us and i like always how guys he said we are like puppies around but we don't know much and we have not much uh, uh, at that time no much understanding of what was happening really around babaji and the greatness of babaji but we were just puppies around babaji just happy uh, bubbling around him i like that phrase of how she said we are like puppies uh, and at the same time Baba said yeah the wagging your tail is not enough you have to <laughs> uh, if you really want to get somewhere it, it's it you have to take it a little bit serious <laughs> the path so uh, I think that's also what we try to speak about from what is it to take the path serious uh, and at the same time know it's effortless and light. It's a lovely paradox. The translation from the um, Hidekandi Saptasati that says, Oh Mother, if we constantly remember thine image in the lotus of our hearts, we will achieve pure understanding and our mind will always be composed without greed and deception. Incessantly, I want to pray to thee, O Mother, with arms outstretched and lowered head. Please grant me pure and firm devotion to thy lotus feet. So for me, it's like this idea, you know, if Baba and whatever practice we use, mantra is in our heart, and then we become one with the whole picture rather than me doing, then it is more like you're talking about this effortless doing even big things. But when I yeah, get afraid and uh, think I need acknowledgement or something, then it goes all cattywampus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, beautiful. So does somebody have a question for? Hi, Gayatri, are you a puppy today? Do you have yes, a my, I have to admit my ego got a little in the way on coming on the call because hair was all like bedhead. And uh, then I said, oh, I was listening to you guys and I said, oh, heck, it doesn't matter what you look like, you're a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just said, I, I love your phrase, how we were like puppies around <laughs> Babaji, you know, in one way, innocent and playful and didn't really understand what was going on, but we are... Yeah, happy like puppies to be around our papa, mama. Uh, yeah, I love that phrase. Yes, can I ask a question? Of course. Yes, 
Um, this, um, is it uh, because of this playfulness that um, that you could take so much uh, of the difficult things? Because I, I mean, uh, with the difficult things, I heard so many stories uh, about how Babaji also uh, was was teaching, and uh, that it wasn't always easy. Um, because he really put his finger on what you had to learn. So I, many times I wondered, why didn't you just run away, you know, <laughs> with so many people? He gave people hard times sometimes, um, or, or many times. So was it because of this playfulness that it was kind of made you all uh, made it light for you to to take also the difficult or the or the the the, the real deep teachings he gave you the real the, the teachings that really was uh, uh, for transformation. I mean, where would you run to? <laughs> <laughs> Can I share something? Are you there? Can I share something? Who is this? This is Bonnie Ramloti. It's Bonnie, Bonnie. Yeah. Yes, it's Bonnie. Can you see me? Bonnie, I see you. Hi. I'm also here. Hi. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's so wonderful to see you. Hey, Pujari. It's so Hi, wonderful. Yeah, Bonnie. Yeah, beautiful. Yes, yeah. beautiful. I recognize you. I know my my my, my Babaji name is Matingi, if you remember. But I was the, went with Pujari. He was the first person I saw do a full out pranam, and I was like, "What are you doing?" And and it was a very funny scene for me the first time. But I just wanted to share a story because it made me think of what Hiraman said, and to answer also something that Anamu. And uh, Anna Marie um, said, um, you know, when you were talking here, Iman, about um, walking across the, the river with um, and he became light as a feather. One time, you know, I went down to the garden, of course, because that was our karma yoga to work all day in the garden. And um, and I went down there and, you know, we were basically just carrying rocks pretty much through the whole day. And at one point, Baba called me over and he's like, come here, come here. And I go over and. And he points at this huge boulder. I mean, honestly, it was, it was, I, I wish I could describe for you like the size of five, 10 guys. I, I mean, really big, you know, and he just looks at me and says, you, you know, move that there. And it was like far, right. Right. And, and, and I, I looked at him and I just, I started to laugh. I'm like, I, I thought he has to be joking, you know, <laughs> that, I mean, of course I can't move that. It's like 20 times the size of me, you know? And he got very intense. He's like, move, you move that from there. And, 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 he, and, and it was got very, really intense. And, and I had that feeling, like you said, like, this is hard. Like, what you really expect me to do this? I can't do this. And, you know, and I found myself going completely panicking, like a little kid and, and upset. And I literally started to cry. And, and he just, he was so emphatic. He was like, move that there, you know? And so the next thing you know, it's like my mind, I just went into motion and I, and I started to run around and I grabbed a bunch of people. And I, I was like, okay, come on, you know, we're, and we got sticks and we got every, I and mean, it was, and probably, I mean, really at least 10 people to help me, you know, and we rolled this rock. I mean, and it was far, I want to say, I wish I, about 30 feet or so, you know, I mean, we rolled it from one place to another. And it was like, everybody was working. And I mean, you could tell nobody was even asking like, why is it going here? It's just going, you know, and, and it gets all the way there. And it was, it probably took, I don't, I want to say a half an hour probably, you know, to do it. And then I like, we're all done. And I look and I, and like, they all look at me and, and I say, okay, thank you. You know, and I, I walk over and I say, look, Baba, you know, look here. I, and he looks at me and he looks at the rock and he goes, okay, back. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
And I was like, what? <laughs> I mean, I just couldn't even believe it. I was like, what? Back? Same place? And he's like, yes. And like, why are you asking me? You know? And and I was like, okay. You know, I mean, so I ran back around. I got everybody back. And he was like, and I moved it all the way back. And at that point, like he starts to just walk, he walks away. It's like, okay, lunch, you know? <laughs> and and lunch. I remember oh, you lucky. <laughs> You lucky lunch. lunch. Well, no, it wasn't really, but it was like he just walked away, and I remembered it was time for lunch, and which was only a meal you got pretty much. But, but it was such a big lesson, and I I remembered like I thought it was so important, like that I did, and then I did it, and then it just didn't matter, you know. Like really, what the thing was was him showing me that, you know, we could do anything <laughs> and and what we did didn't matter you know and I, like I don't you know and it was the heaviest thing I could imagine doing in my whole life physically you know and yet it happened you know and that was kind of for me there was always that sort of play element and there was always that serious element you know and I have like a hundred stories like that but I ask myself many times, like, why did I do that? Here I come from college and I go do this thing and I spend the whole day just lifting rocks. It's like, what am I doing? There were so many times I'd be throwing a rock in a basket going, what the fuck am I doing this for? You know, and, and why does he have me doing this? And, you know, and the Excuse whole me. thing. Yep. Excuse me, please may I speak? Yes, I, and, what, and so I, you know, so that was really part of the experience for me. It was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank okay, well, yes. beautiful, Bonnie. I, I would like to react a little bit more on Anna-Mar's uh, question. She was asking uh, about how could we stand that energy around Babaji or and, and all the, the drama? Because it was very, very intense, of course, with all the devotees being in, in a highly processed state, like Bonnie is sharing from the intensity that she goes through. Everybody was in that intense uh, energy field. So... And me, I remember the period when I stayed three, four months without moving from Herakan, but I had a stable duty to be a pujai, so take care of the temple and sing the arti and things. But even that in the whole rhythm and digesting all this energy and being with the people every day, it sometimes I also felt, actually not, but a few times I felt, Baba, I really want to break. Just let me go a few days to Haldwani but when I would be thinking over it, but what to do in Haldwan, you know, there is, there, there is only one way. If it's too much, you surrender more. <laughs> That's what's mm -hmm. my conclusion to my inner friction as an answer to Anamar. Uh, what, what, the only thing that could come up with me, and it's similar to what Hiraman said, where can you go? I was in my mind was saying, oh, I want to just a few days in Kairos View Hotel and have a lassie and just enjoy or read a book or oh, digest what I'm learning or digest the teaching that Baba was giving me just, but there was no way to do that. There's, there was only this moment, where can you go? Just, this is the opportunity to fully surrender. I always have to tell yeah. this story from this, this German lady in the riverbed giving somewhere carrying big stones but this lady was giving little 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 plants water and but with a big bucket and she had little by little give this plants water and then Baba took that bucket and he emptied that 10-15 liter bucket on one little plant so it completely soaked and almost drowned of course and then he told her you have to give all understand mm -hmm. so that was whatever Baba did with boulders or giving plants water he gave a teaching if we not fully surrender, if we not 100% give everything to the divine, then we're missing the opportunity of our life, no? And we are in front of Babaji. So it's, it's uh, he had to be intensive with us. I think that's with everybody, if it's with Hiraman or with Gayatri or with me, it was super intense or Ramloti, anybody. It was super, super intense. That intensity, we have not found anywhere else. Nobody of us has, has found that kind of intensity that was vibrating around Babaji and between his devotees and people around him, animals around him. The intensity of life around Babaji was superb.
but it was the superb possibility to fully surrender if it was you have to give all let go of everything let go of who you think you are just start new almost every hour of the day you could start new again and that was what kept us going because there was nothing more beautiful than to be there that's that's what i realized from the moment i came into the ashram i didn't want to leave not 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 a minute <laughs> My mind wanted to leave a few times, but that quickly uh, I saw that's not really an option. <laughs> but that's for Anamaya to answer your question, yeah. it, to how to deal that with That is it. really, yeah. uh, 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 thank you, Pujari. That's really a beautiful, beautiful answer. Thank you so yeah, much. And that's in all our life now. In the, every moment, we have the opportunity to surrender to our life. Yeah. If we can do that, then there is really no problem. Yeah. <laughs> but could I add something to that? Um, mm -hmm. I just, he, there was, like Pujari said, the puppy, um, but there was also incredibly intense moments. And the thing was, I think we all knew we were in the presence of a divine being. And so, as we say, Om Namah Shivai, we were all surrendered to whatever uh, teaching or treatment or whatever he would he would do and I think it is because of the lessons that we learned in those difficult moments that about ourselves what we, we what we you know could see um like the first month I was there he treated me horribly I mean I he told me I had to bathe down river because I was so dirty I couldn't bathe where the other people bathed and, you know, that was very hurtful to an ego, but it was like, okay, he's the divine, whatever he says, I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And, and so after like a month, um, a friend from America came and uh, Holly Bull and her mother, and I had heard that Babaji liked her, like took her around, treated her really great and whatever. So I thought, oh, well, Maybe if I go and hug her and say hello, he'll know that I'm her friend and he'll be nicer to me. <laughs> and so, I mean, duh. anyway, um, I went, I, I left my work and I went up to give her a big hug and he was right across the river and saw it. And so I thought, okay, now I'm in, I'm in with the cool group. And immediately I saw Raghavir starting to run and Babaji shot it and, and Raghuvir ran across the river and came across the bridge and came right up to me and said, Babaji wants you right away. And I just knew I was, I was exposed. I was, he knew what I was doing. And so I went with, I went back and he took his stick and he started to beat me. And he told me I had to get out. And oh my God, it was just the, exact opposite reaction that I was hoping to get <laughs> from him. But, uh, and I had to leave. And I had made myself a promise that I would ask him three times if I could stay. So right there and then I asked the first time and he said, no, you leave. Why did you leave your work? And I thought, yes, I, I, I dropped my karma yoga for this stupid ego, you know, demonstration. And anyway, I went and got my stuff together and everybody was like, oh, don't worry, he'll let you stay, you know. And uh, so I came down with my luggage and I left and then he sent me to lunch and everybody said, see, it's, this is how it starts. He'll let you go to lunch and then he'll tell you, you can take your stuff. No, I came back from lunch and my luggage was gone. And Radhusham came up and said, uh, your luggage is, is already going down the river with a coolie, a porter, and uh, you better hurry. <laughs> and I, I just, I couldn't believe he, I was having to leave, but I had really messed up. And so I went to, to Heldwani. I, uh, a guide came and showed me the way, and I know that was Babaji, this ma village man, um, helping me to cross the river. And I spent one night and the whole night I wrote him this letter, I confessing what I had tried to 
you know, we say run a number. I tried to run a number on the divine. <laughs> and um, so I wrote the letter and I confessed it all. And see, I wouldn't have seen that. And I wouldn't have learned that had he not beat me and sent me away. And mm -hmm. so I realized that if I'm going to play those kind of games, I cannot be with the divine. And this distance of being in Haldwani really, oh, it was so, uh, I could really feel, you know, this is, you're far from the divine if you do this kind of thing. And so the next day I went to the, the telegraph to ask if I could come back. I, I wanted to send the whole letter. And the guy looked at me and he said, you can send like five words. <laughs> so my whole letter, but I was like, okay, he's heard the letter. You know, he was with me when I wrote it. And I just wrote, can I come back? And I got back to the hotel and there was a taxi waiting for me. And he, he said, are you American? I said, yes. He said, this taxi, Babaji has sent you this taxi. I get to them site, there's a horse. And they say, are you the American girl? Yes, this horse, Babaji sent this horse for you. And I mean, it was like this, all of a sudden this red carpet was being rolled out in my return. And when I got to the ashram, he was waiting at the end of the stone wall, at, right at the beginning of the ashram. And he was just standing there alone. And I jumped down from the horse because I thought I can't be higher than him. And I went and I touched his feet and he looked at me and he said, happy. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yes, there he is. Happy puppy, happy and puppy. So, it, it, there are the plays of the two, you know, this beautiful thing and this hard thing. And I, all I can say is each time that you got into this kind of uh, discipline or, or embarrassing or heavy confrontation, it was always to show you something about yourself and how you were either <coughs> viewing things or treating yourself. I mean, that mirror was always there. And so that's, uh, we could, we could surrender to the to the rough stuff because it was all out of love for us and to get us to see things and so mm -hmm. it wasn't hard at all actually i mean those were some really beautiful and big lessons in my life so i'm very grateful for them mm -hmm. may i ask a question please yes sounds like biggie i think it's lynn oh who is it diwali diwali my name is Diwali. Oh, there you are. Okay. It was very difficult to find a Zoom link. It took me 30 minutes. I'm I joined the meeting at 29 minutes past. Very difficult to find a Zoom link. But I found it. I thought today, Alok, 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 Alok will be on next week. One hour earlier. Were you asking about Alok? I think we lost her or... Anyways, if you let me know how I can make sure you get it. I posted on our website and Facebook. I don't quite and send it out in emails, but I don't, I'll try to do better. And it's the same link. It's, the it's same, always the same. It's yeah. the same link every time. So just keep it and keep using the same link every time. But next week will be one hour earlier. Okay. And Alok and Mina will be there. I'd like to add one more thing about what um, your question, Emily, and also Bonnie's response is that Babaji was always teaching us to look at the possible and what we thought was possible and what we thought was impossible. And to, and to, <laughs> you know, we get so attached to the possible sometimes that we make the impossible really big. And uh, so he was always making the impossible small, you know, Ooh. even that big rock, when you get a bunch of people to move it, it's not so big. And, and his lessons are always layered in that way that, you know, don't don't limit ourselves don't think that there's anything that we can't do and at the same time don't have so much ego that you think we can that we think we can do anything you know it's some kind of balance in between but tell, so that made it easy to stay tell the bell story <laughs> the bell story
Yes, thank you. Beautiful, uh, uh, beautiful answers. And uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. And uh, I, I remember uh, somebody else um, who was there at the time uh, during one of the Zoom meetings, and I can't uh, remember who, who it was, uh, told a story that he all the time he wanted to leave. Uh, and then uh, Gohari told him uh, he, he left sometimes. And uh, then he asked Gohari, so uh, what? But I always came back, he said. And then uh, the, the person asked, so what did Babaji do? And uh, Gohari said, he, he just embraced me. So you're back again. So that is, uh, I thought it was so beautiful. <laughs> yes, thank you for all the answers. The, the really beautiful answers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And please ask anything more. It's really beautiful. Thank you. So maybe we'll go to the. Yes. Um, can you hear me? I can hear yes. you. Yes, I hear you too. Hi, Hi, Hi Jayshree. Yeah, go ahead. I have two questions. One is uh, for both of you. Like, uh, do you have stories about um, examples about um, with Babaji about letting go? Like when you attach to something and then it doesn't happen. <laughs> and when you really can release it, which is very difficult, then it can happen. If you have maybe some examples of stories uh, in the practical way that shows um, the letting go. Um, yeah. It's okay. Yeah, we, oh, there are many examples. <laughs> if I if yeah. I'll tell you one, which was very difficult for me, and I'm almost uh, was shocked to to see how I was touched by it. Uh, but at one point, uh, when I was a pujari in Hirakan in the main temple, that was, and behind there we had a little room. The pujari room is a lovely little duni and fella, and opposite that was like the the storeroom for the pujari where you make uh, where we had all the all the incense and all the, the bottles of ghee and the arti lamps and the bells and a whole big room behind that was full of incense and all moldy and uh, many little cockroaches and uh, thousands of cockroaches in that room eating the agabathi so i said well that's no fun that's it i have to clean that up so i i started to clean that up which was a beautiful job and, and Babaji passed by and he enjoyed it. I was uh, picking that up. But then I, at one point I thought, well, I have to do this. But I cleaned all the thing. I, I painted it and the old Pujari, he was, he was much too old to do that kind of stuff. So he was happy that I was cleaning the mess out. He saw that I didn't throw everything away, but I was, every packet was uh, respected and, and I cleaned it all up. And then I thought, well, I need some cupboards here because it's, it's such a mess. You need some organization. So I ordered some wood shelves uh, from Haldwani so I could make some simple cupboards to store all this incense and other utilities. And <laughs> that was not a big deal. I ordered all the stuff from Haldwani and then all the wood came, beautiful shelves. Uh, and then the truck came down the riverbed. So I went down to pick up the wood. But then I got into a problem with Mansing because he claimed all my wood. He, he, not one shelf, not one piece of wood was for me available. He said, no, oh, and with the roughness and toughness that he can do, he's like the second king of, uh, of Hirakan. He would just not allow me to get my wood. So I was very disappointed. I even had to cry and I was like, Mama Mia, this is, uh, how can this happen? No, he is such a one way of beautiful devotee, but uh, why does it do this thing on me? And uh, but this was Babaji. I saw <laughs> that I just had to let go because Baba it was whatever. It was a possibility for me to really let go. What what I really thought this is a beautiful project and it's uh, but it's not gonna happen. He just took my wood and I had no no possibility to do something with it. Later. I ordered a metal cupboard, which came ready-made from Aldwani, so I could just pick it up and put it inside, and that worked. But that was a, a very strong one for me, 
where I had already got attachment to my project and my wood and Babaji showed me to let go. And later I saw that many things that Westerners brought, was it tools or things for the garden, Babaji would give everything to Mansing. So Mansing was just like of, he hoarded everything, everything material uh, would go to Mansing. So also my wood, first it goes to Mansing and then he can put it in his big storeroom and then he can decide what he wants to do with it. So he was used, used in a way to, to clean many people's uh, attachment about physical stuff that was for me. And that happened a few times with him that he took my things away. And there are other small things that I have examples that Baba, that I, they stole my bell or my other stuff. And that the things I had to learn to let go. But with the wood project was a strong one that I even had to cry and then I, of course, it was obvious I was attached, but at the moment it took me maybe half an hour to, to realize, pull, drop it, there will be another way. It's in Babaji's ashram. You just have to learn to let go. And, and, but it was a very painful one. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's my biggest, biggest crying attachment story that I had in Hirika. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Somebody else has a story here. Man's mouth is about to go. Go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the, the biggest letting go for me was the last time I was in Herakon when Bava was alive. Um, I had been building a temple in Hawaii and, and uh, he was sending me back. And, um, and I, I'd also, um, he had told me that he was going to leave his body. And so I kind of knew it was the last time I was going to see him physically. And, and, uh, and it, he was just so completely gentle. And I just didn't want to go, you know, I mean, I, I, my room was kind of at the end of the ashram kind of, and, and he just came into my room and, and kind of guided my packing. I didn't have much to pack, but I was just dragging everything out. And, and, um, uh, and then he just was just so gentle. And, and then he just kind of walked me in stages, you know, past the tea shop. And then, then I was on the trail and I still was just kind of, I wasn't in tears, but I was just like kind of melancholy. And, and, uh, and he just finally just said, you know, I'm always inside you, you go now, just in such a gentle way that, that, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it just made letting, you know, I don't, I, we, none of us, we ever really let go of Bobby Janning, but it made it so that I could uh, put one foot in front of the other a little bit. And so that, that was a, a letting go that sounds easy, but it was actually the hardest letting go for me of, of um, knowing that that was the last time I was going to see him. Mm -hmm. For a that while, beautiful. Anyway. That brings yeah. That brings me to another little story that I had. That uh, the last few months before Baba Samadhi, he sent me to the Gufa site to stay with Gorari and to be a pujari on the Gufa site. Mm -hmm. And that's his gentle way of of already uh, loosen up my attachment to his physical because India some everything and everybody was circling like puppies <laughs> around Babaji it was the concentration was on him but there I had to learn uh, together with Gorhari and he was already very good with it that uh, Babaji is everything Babaji is in all these temples all these murtis in the river this Mount Kailas this is Babaji so mm -hmm. in those two months I learned to experience Babaji on the Gufa side as everything. And, and it was a beautiful experience. But, and when I would come, because many times I went to the other side in the evening to have his darshan. But then when I would come to him, make my pranams and some offerings, he would look at me from, why you come? Well, at that time I didn't really understand, but he said, why you come to me? It's like, so I went, you're on the Gufa. So I went back to the Gufa where Babaji also came every day. So I had to learn just once a day, Babaji would come to the Gufa and give his darshan, and that was it. And I'm not going to run behind him. And of course, when he took Samadhi, I learned that it was a beautiful teaching he gave me to 
loosen up from his physical beauty and, and intensity of being around him and only focused on, on this body with this beautiful vibration. I had to learn uh, to see him in, in the river, in the mountain, in the people, in the, the animals. It was really that kind of training I got in the last two months, which I am, I'm so thankful that I had that experience uh, also, because it was my way of gently letting go of my attachment uh, to Babaji's physical. And that attachment really never, never really went, because if I walk now into my little temple, uh, every other day, I'm in tears just walking in the morning into the temple and see Babaji's pictures or his padukas. I don't know what it is. And maybe Hiraman has something like that, but I'm very emotional often in the early mornings. Just entering the temple, it's like I'm, I'm feeling Babaji is, is sitting there and I'm, I get very overwhelmed often with emotion. Um, so I don't know if that's still... I'm letting go of him or it's some, some devotional attachment or it's his presence. But I can tell you that every other day I'm very moved just coming into my little prayer room. I don't know what that is. Maybe Roman can help me out <laughs> on that one. But it's just, it's a beautiful feeling, but it's, it's also uh, mixed with attachment. If I would not have met Babaji physically, I don't think I would have that mm. intense, intense, uh, yeah, emotion all the time. Yeah. Sorry. So I, I miss him incredibly, incredibly, the, this, the, in one way. <laughs> and I don't mm. think it will go away this lifetime. <laughs> Sorry, can I yeah. ask you something? Yeah. Um, when you came, I remember you were very in love with Puju. And yeah. something happened in there, and I, that must be a letting go story. Um, how what happened there with between? Uh, right. Could yeah. you share that? Yeah, I can share my part of it. Uh, what happened? And of course, uh, Puju was a, was a lady uh, uh, devotee from Babaji, and she lived in Swibenalp, and we met there in Swibenalp on one of the times that I also shortly stayed in Schweibenalp, in my changing passport or visa. Uh, and then uh, we've had some attraction to each other and we thought, well, maybe Puja, her name is Puja and I'm Pujari and we sing lovely uh, bhajans and arti together. We even went to Zurich and Basel to sing arti to, to in people's homes. And that's so we said, well, we felt attracted to each other said but and we're already like f uh, f close together but I said no but let's wait no let's first go to Babaji and see if this is really the meaning of, of, of my life and our life to to be together so we came to Babaji together at that time and then Babaji immediately split us up when we came to Hirakan he put me on the Gufa side so that was your correct part of that part and he let her stay uh, on, on, on the normal ashram side and he took her very close and so we both got an incredible teaching part of that teaching for me was like if you come for God you don't come with your girlfriend you come for me or you don't come that was my message I had to completely let go of her to come to Babaji for, for this kind of thing no Pujari that's not you go there Gorari uh, Brahmachari you with him in his room, <laughs> you, <laughs> that's your road. So well, often I think, oh, I messed up. I did some wrong things there, uh, but that, that's, that's another story. But you're correct in that sense that that was part of the teaching to let go of my maybe wife, maybe girlfriend. Uh, he broke it completely, he said, no, 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 you there, she here. And she got her Lilas with Babaji on that level. And I got my solitude levels uh, training uh, to be with Gorari and just be the happiest person in the world just to be on the Gufa side. I can add that later when Babaji came daily for Darshan uh, to see all the temples and Gorari would often cook something for him that he would eat and I would make a place for him and take his staff and, and, and be around and then he would walk along the temples and then one day walking along the temples at the Sitaram Krishna, Radha Krishna Hanuman temple, the second temple. 
he stopped and looked at me in the eyes and said, this your temple. <laughs> so I knew <laughs> uh, later when I realized I got married again and, and now I'm married with uh, Anjani for the second time. So it's not that karmas didn't go completely away, but ultimately there is a teaching. If you want to come to God, you come alone. That's, that's something in your heart you melt with God. And at the same time, I'm, uh, I go to a lifetime where I'm married now for the second time. And Babi showed me that by saying to me that the second temple is my temple, Sita Ram, Radha Krishna. Uh, I have to go through that experience also. And in my heart, I know ultimately you come alone. I think that answers, uh, that, that, that answers your, your question, Gayatri. Yeah, thank you, love. Yeah, I, yeah. I could imagine watching from afar that that was uh, a, a hard one. <laughs> that, yeah, that was a hard one, but uh, at the same, I had no much problem with surrender. If Babasheet left, I said, okay, left. If Babasheet drop it, okay, drop it. If you say stand up, okay, stand up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's our devotion, and that's for everybody the same. If Babaji would tell you did this seriously with your look in the eyes, no, no, then there was no other way, and there was no other option than to surrender and go through whatever emotion that would go with it. It is that you had to go through it. And Baba was, of course, master in, in, in probably cleaning up lifetimes of attachments <laughs> that we had and show us something different, which on our own, uh, we would not have gone there or we would not have been able to go and experience that or life must of course life can bring any situation around but Babaji was mastering confronting us every day with something intense <laughs> and uh, how are you in Russia H how are you going now in Russia is it good are you enjoying how is the temple now you have in Russia? Well, like child, I'm, I'm at the moment in Russia uh, since a year of six, seven, we've built up our house and I'm, I'm very happy to be here and have a lot of a different life. It's uh, more of a quiet life. Although the last five, six years I've been building and building a lot on this uh, place and I'm happy here. My wife is very happy here because she is Russian and she wanted very much to go here. I went here also more as a commitment to the Babaji community. In a, I hear a doggy. Uh, I don't know from who the doggy is. Being reminded of your puppy. <laughs> ah, puppy. Okay, my puppy style. Yeah. <laughs> but, but if people could mute if they're not not talking, that yeah. would be great. Thank yeah. you. Go ahead. No, but to, to, I'm very happy here. Only I, something, when Muniaji came here in 2011, it was, it was. They, they kind of asked me to, to come here to help the Russian people. At the moment, it, I'm connecting with some people the, to, to Skype and Zoom, and we visit uh, some places, in, in mostly in Perm. But with the Moscow devotees, there has not been yet a big initiative to start a new ashram or a big project, which was the intention. We've never been able to really move that around. So there I'm st either still waiting, but also I think it's maybe not the meaning. Just to be in Russia is a whole other dynamic for me to let go of the ashram responsibilities and uh, in Holland, to let go of that whole uh, taking that as a burden, what I spoke about before, to just leave it to Babaji and the whole group. There's a big group of devotees, so uh, a new way of life opened up for me. And here we are in a very small village, within the winter time, only 50 people or families living here in very simple wooden houses. But we built a very beautiful house and also a guest house and a guest room, so we can and we do have people coming and visiting us. And I'm actually very happy to be in a little bit a solitary place. And it also reminds me of the time that Babaji sent me to the Gufa site. At that time, it was also in 84, very simple and very quiet. Uh, with just Gorari there and a Ram Kutir and a cow. And I enjoyed that so much. So I am coming to the same 
enjoyment to love. We have a beautiful river. I just had a swim in the river before we started the satsang. So a pure area I live in with a beautiful river, a small village and people visiting me. And I've been working mostly doing carpentry and painting and uh, working on this house for the last seven years, which I enjoy. And now I, it's done and I'm kind of, okay, Baba, what's next? I've been working on a little booklet in the winter time in this winter and I enjoyed satsang meetings and I have my temple flourishing where I'm spending a few hours every day. Uh, that's a bit, little bit my life at the moment. And if it becomes bigger, great. If it stays like this small, um, I'm at the moment the same. I'm surrendered. I'm very happy with the, the simple life that came to me. Before, I must say, I was rich. When I started in Holland, I, saw I had a million to spend. So we could start, I could buy a house and pay for the ashram and I, I could do a lot. And then at the moment, I, I've, I'm not in that position. I'm now on pension. So I get uh, my uh, pension from, from Dutch government. And that's what I have to live from. So that's also turned around from if, you, if you've been used to a lot and to go down and down and down, it's almost like, okay, I had a blanket and a mala in Baba's time and that was enough, that made me okay. And I had some money on the bank, but the rest of my money, I gave it all to Babaji and he gave it to the cow farm in South India uh, after first rejecting it because he was not really interested in my money. That was also a very beautiful moment that I could see Baba is not interested in, in money. Uh, I gave it to him anyway, <laughs> but, and then it went to the cow farm. But I've, I go in my life a few times from being rich to being poor and it, or in money-wise, but it, it really, on a heart level, it doesn't change a bit. It really doesn't change a bit. Often to have a lot just gives a lot of responsibilities and a lot of difficulties that you have to deal with. To live with little is a, is a beautiful option. I even just re get reminded about Gora Devi's option that she just had Vibhuti to brush her teeth. <laughs> Baba gave her sometimes a rupee to buy soap to wash her sari. She didn't need a calm because she had a mundan. She had nothing. She had two saris and a mala and, and sometimes Baba gave her a rupee. And that oh, lifestyle is, is adorable. He had me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> he yeah. had the disciple. He made her a disciple. So. Yeah, of I, course, you, you took care of her uh, after, but at, at the time that she was doing her tapasya from carrying buckets of water and, and writing in her books, she really had nothing at that time when you were not yet in the picture. I know you took care of her from your love for her. And, but no, but Babaji made me. I mean, that when I, um, that was a beautiful little story short. <clears throat> um, the night before I was praying, I want to be like Gora because I wanted to speak Hindi. I wanted to be close to him. I wanted to serve like she did. And the next morning I went to make pranam to him and he said, you're not pranam to me, you pranam to her. And he took our heads and he banged them together like two coconuts. And he said, I had to serve her. I had to clean her room. I had to bring her food. And it was all because I made a prayer to be like her instead of him. So again, I felt really stupid, <laughs> but <laughs> But he did create a beautiful friendship and relationship for the rest of our, uh, her life. Right. I want to say history about this, about the letting go. And I don't, I'm not going to, I have a lot of letting go stories, but I want to just say that I think for all of us, the biggest letting go was the Samadhi. And um, we all had to let go of his form. And that was yeah we all had to let go of that attachment and uh find him inside of us so that was i think the biggest letting go for all of us uh, it still brings tears because it was yeah it was beautiful and it was very very painful at the same time yeah, that's why I said it will stay in our lifetime. That that uh, if you touch this place in what you ex explore now in your show us in your heart, yeah, 
that's in me the same thing. That's why I say every other day when I go to my temple, I have this uh, similar emotions, just uh, overwhelmed by Baba's love and energy and, and the grace of having spent so much time around him as a puppy. <laughs> Slowly waking up, my God, I really had this experience in this life and Baba, he was hanging on me like this. Yes, yes, you really had this experience and it's for everybody. Baba's hanging like this on everybody. It's, uh, it looks very special, but Baba loves everything and everybody that much. That was like, it was so uh, amazing for us, but a guarantee that really Baba Z loves every human being unconditionally and, and yeah. Pujari. Are you far from Mon Mongolia? Yes, yes. Mongolia is quite on the other side, close to China. So that's, uh, I think, 3,000 3, kilometers away from me. Other side of Russia? Yeah, yeah. I'm more on the Moscow side. I'm four hours from Moscow and actually quite close to Belarus. In three hours, I'm in Belarus. And four hours, I'm in Finland. <laughs> it's... Uh, yeah, on the left side of Russia, and on the right side is uh, down is Mongolia. That that's three at least three thousand kilometers away, I think. Yeah. And Babaji did tell us that he has a great interest in Russia and Mongolia. Well, I guess I traveled in the in the Uta, the Ural Mountains, which is uh, above Perm, and it's uh, like more where the Indian Himalayas, if you would continue them north, they would go into the Ural Mountains, which is in Russia. And I've traveled there with my wife and a few friends on horses, because it, it, it's like to travel through Tibet. You see prayer flags, you see the mountains are similar like in Tibet. You see the people, they look the same. They look like Tibetan or Mongolian. Uh, they sing songs on their horses. They make fires, they make food. We had a beautiful uh, trip. Uh, through nature actually and to, to a lake and a mountain uh, which is very famous here uh, Baikal and, and it's, 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 it's like being in, uh, in Tibet it was that beautiful so the Himalayas they continue if you stretch them out up north they continue into Russia and I felt a similar energy there very 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 impressive and beautiful Russia is an amazing country, an amazing, amazing, beautiful country. Nature-wise also, I mean, yeah. May I ask the people in US, how is the day-to-day -day being 19? How is it for those in US? Gertrude, I think- 19. Go ahead. The day-to-day -day being in the U.S. What? Today is nineteenth. In the June. holiday, the the nineteenth of June, the uh, slavery. Yeah, June Juneteenth. Juneteenth. Yeah. yeah. So nineteenth. Uh, uh, what what do you call this holiday? Call it Juneteenth. Juneteenth. Juneteenth, and it's just been made a national holiday. It's the it's day. A, why? It's a day that a very terrible thing happened in Tulsa, and back in history, a real brutal, terrible thing against black people. So it's a day that uh, it's kind of like a Memorial Day event. Oh, Tulsa. Was it 300, I think? 300, Tulsa. Yes. Yeah. 300, um, what do you say? Died, perished, killed? Killed. Nobody really knows. I think maybe more than that, or it's there. Yeah, it's just a. Tragedy. Tragedy in history. Oh, I see. And is it manifesting in any way like today on 19th? Um, on 19th today, is it manifesting in any way? Is there tension or fear or protest or how is it manifesting? I think it's a day that's just heavy on a lot of our hearts, you know, that, that human beings don't be... Like Baba always was saying, that he really wants to make us human. So instead of being homo sapiens, 
he wants us to be human and and it's a day that reminded us that we weren't very human and that we have a lot of work to to become human and it's something that we have to do every day not just on days that uh are days that we remember for good things or bad things and that it's every it's an every moment kind of thing to become human that um we want to treat each other with kindness and and live in that place of acceptance and joy. Hey, I, really like, I like very much, hello, hello. I like very much that you say human and not human being. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah and it's, it's, it's the same, I think. It's like uh, around Barbara, he, he, he pointed out that he, he didn't like any separation. Uh, not between races, not between countries. And we lived like this around Barbies, you know, like we were all just puppies. And, and it doesn't matter if you're a black puppy or a white puppy or a Holland puppy or an American puppy. With Barbies, that worked beautifully and perfectly. Mm -hmm. and, and in the world, what we often get on the screen or also on the televisions is they, there is so much separation uh, how, how you say that, that keeping that in, installed and, and the leaders are keeping that firmly installed and everybody has their, their little power play in it. And that's not what Babaji wanted. He wanted another world. He said, don't trust your leaders. No, he's, it's, he's, he's, Babaji showed us that as human beings or humans, <laughs> if you like to call it that way, yeah. humans or human beings, we, yeah. are, we are meant to be able to love everything and everybody without any separation. No, love doesn't make any border. It doesn't stop in Russia or in America or on any border where people are black or white. Love doesn't stop anywhere. No, it's, it's uh, truly omnipresent. And Baba showed us this. And the beauty that if he pulled us in that, that direction, how well we felt and how our eyes started to shine. And we long for that, that beautiful feeling like Gayatri said that her she's crying because around Babaji you felt so much love and such an intensity of that that you would like to experience that in the world in America today but it's, <laughs> that that's very difficult that's very difficult because you get a whole other picture in your heart you know it's another possibility and in an ashram if we have a bhakti festival, that same energy is definitely there. And on a big Guru, Purna cele Guru Purnima celebration, that energy is definitely there. And it's like Babaji is alive and shining to everybody and everything what is going on there. But normally, also if you look all at of you that, here, also seeing all of you, I have it all you, and you're all so beautiful. Hello, dear Kathleen. I haven't seen yeah. you in so long oh my goodness oh my goodness yeah so sweet to see you i i i wanted to ask hiraman for a letting go story uh another letting go story yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's all letting go <laughs> <laughs> it's a kind of a daily story um can you think of a good letting go story oh yeah that was a big letting go story uh, well, Yesterday. <laughs> uh, for me, uh, another big letting go was um, the Hawaiian ashram. That was a big one for me, and uh, probably still still working in there a little bit. Um, so uh, to just. Uh, and and that what happened and actually kind of a big part of that letting go happened in Baca. Um, Creston. In Creston, yeah. Or, um, it, um, it just became untenable to live there that the neighbors were so noisy and all kinds of things happened, but basically um, when going to the temple, uh, Muni Raj was there. Pujari, you were there, I think, too. Yeah, yeah. And Raghu. And uh, uh, Muni Raj asked me what happened, you know, and I, and I just 
um, there was all kinds of things that I could have said or uh, made excuses or whatever, but I just said I failed. And for me, that was uh, really a good letting go moment. I just, I just took it on as, you know, I didn't, I didn't get it done. And, uh, and as soon as I did that, Munaraj just was like total love, you know, like, and before that there was a bit of an edge. And, and then when I did that, it was just like, yeah, well, we'll do better next time. And, uh, and so that was a big letting go for me, you know. And was, where are you now, please, Herman? Where are you now? I'm in a Washington state near the Canadian border and uh, kind of hoping to build another temple. So I have some I hope land. You do. And, I hope you do. And I uh, hope you do. I'm going to pray for that temple. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to pray for that temple. I've tucked it under my wing. <laughs> I'll pray well, for that temple. Thank you. Give yeah. our temple. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So um, letting go can be a really beautiful thing, you know, especially when we let go something that's really hard for us to let go of. It leaves room for endless possibilities. This, this point about bringing up excuses, Herman, you know, it's like, well, you know, my mother was sick, my father was dying, my, you know, the, all these people moved in around that weren't, uh, you know, a good match for an ashram. I wasn't safe with my daughter there. You know, I know a lot of the situation there because it was, it was and it still is very dear to my heart also because I went there many times. Um, but this idea of excuses, and that's what I find happens when something goes wrong. You know, first my mind will fill up with these excuses and blame other people and, you know, and then finally to get to a place of surrender, like, you know, Baba's in charge here. Yeah. Drop it. You know, I could have, there's many things I could have done differently or better or whatever, but I did the best I could. You did the best you could. And yeah, so that's a really, but boy, my mind can just fill up with that excuses and blame. And it's just. And then it's not really letting go. That part of it is hell. That's hell. Yeah. To me, yeah. that's hell. If, or whatever word you know for me it is yeah, that, that's what i before said like we take it as a burden you know the, the mm, yeah. gave us a duty and we make it into a heavy burden and there's a really me there there's a ramloti there and there's a hero on there and there's a pujari there and we the gayatri there and we're all doing that thing for babaji and mm. that's not the way we so it's yeah. it's not personal it's just if it doesn't happen it doesn't doesn't matter it's like like bonnie said i move the stone and then you move it backwards it's about really something else uh what we are learning and but yeah. it's difficult because we are taking life personal and until we we get it uh what hiram mm. beautifully did describe if you're in a flow of the loving flow then there is not much need for a person there. You just keep on flowing and there's not so much to evaluate if I'm doing good or bad or it, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. And didn't we all know when Bonnie was telling her story that that stone was going to get moved right back yeah. where it was? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. lucky yeah. it was just a stone and not a whole <laughs> bridge. He made me move a bridge, build a bridge mm -hmm. and then he made me move the bridge like I don't know, five feet. He said, no, not there, here. I mean, <laughs> you're crossing the river. What difference does it make? But, you know, move the bridge. <laughs> right. So I think we all failed as, as ashram leaders at one point or another. And I remember when I was president of the, head, the ashram here in Crestone, I mean, there was a part of me, I, I was with Ramlota, I wanted to be in Italy. There was all my Babaji family there. Here there was Kailash, me, Danesh and Naraini. And it was just, I, I really wanted to be in Italy. And Muniraj was so adamant that I had to be here and I didn't feel it in my heart. So 
I was failing and um, I did a peyote ceremony. I called a, a meeting and uh, prayed to know if I could leave the ashram. <laughs> that was my purpose for the ceremony. And there was all mixed feelings because I thought, oh, I'm a bad devotee because I don't, I'm not surrendering to being here. Yet in my heart, I want to be in Italy. And um, in this peyote ceremony, Babaji said to me, all I ask of you is that you follow your heart. So I resigned and Ramoti took back the mantle. Thank you very much, baby. <laughs> so, uh, but I, I felt I failed, yeah. Um, but in the end, he just said, follow your heart. So, yeah. Sashaji said to me, and when I did come back, so for people newer, so the ashram here started in 86, and from 86 to 90, Radha Shah, myself, and an Indian woman, Sheila Devi, and then JD also helped start it. And then we left for uh, five, I left for five years, and Radha Shah went to Russia, and Gayatri lovingly took it over and took so much care and love. And, and, uh, but anyways, when I came back in 95, one of the first things I did was go to India, and I went to Sastraji and the people wanted to know because, you know, it's, it's hard to change situations and leadership and everything. And people want to know, how's the ashram going to be? And Sastraji said, oh, it's going to be wonderful. Sastraji was great like this. This is going to be wonderful. And he said, otherwise, mother would not have let herself to install that. And then he said, and you would not be, have been born as a servant of the mother. And... Then he said, and remember, Ramloti, you do nothing. Mother does it all. Mm -hmm. And so that's really helpful for me to remember that Baba is, you know, because people come, oh, it's so wonderful. You folks are so good. jonathan has been here. Prem's been here 25 years. You've been here over 30 years. And it's like, really? Baba. <laughs> Baba has done it. And... I can say that I really, I don't have a clue. I know that I get stuck when it's hard because it is hard sometimes because I, I make it hard because it seems like so much. But when I, when I hear that, really what comes to me is that it's a miracle. I tell people it's a miracle and Baba did it. And I, I don't know if you remember Rambuti, but the, we had a Samaj meeting where I resigned and then uh, nominated you and after that meeting, I was asking for a sign from Baba. Have I, you know, did I understand right away? And after that meeting and you accepted the presidency, we came outside and there was a cloud over that was in the exact shape of a hand, blessing. It was right over us, this hand, blessing. It was so beautiful. I was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I'm just grateful for, like I said, everything you did those five years. I look around and anyway, it's, it's a miracle folks. If you can come here, it's, it's great. And, you know, and people say, well, will you live here forever? I said, I have no idea. Just like you here, Mon, you know, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen, but as long as I'm here, I'll keep doing my steps. And if I get to a real quiet place, you know, someplace else, I don't know. I'm a little addicted to, to work. So. Not sure if I would do so well like you, Pujari. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, it is, I, I don't know. It is not think. really a doing. It's something to be so intensely in an ashram. It, it's beyond. Uh, you do what you do every day, but it's it's it's. We take it so personal, and so often Sasaji also told me it is it is not your job. It's happening. Babaji is doing it. It comes to me a lovely story when the first opening happened. And Muniaji was coming with Sastiji, and we had to organize for maybe 400 people coming uh, in the old ashram that was. Said, wow, I don't like this plastic plates. It was, I, I want really maybe this Indian kind of tallies, this metal plates. I want to find them on a, on a second hand uh, place. So I went to a second hand place where they sell big kitchens for Horik, for, for restaurants, and all that stuff. And we needed some big pots and pans and spoons. So I went there. And I come driving up that place. And at the same time, I see they unloading a truck. And this, this kind of manager from that place, he, he walked to the truck. And what comes rolling out 
500 metal plates from a hospital that were not needed anymore. He said, oh yeah, then a lot of other stuff came rolling out. He said, oh, but I need, I come for plates. Isn't that amazing? Exactly 500 plates come rolling out <laughs> that truck. And I bought them for a gilder each. It was like, I, Baba, I know you're helping me all the time. But <laughs> this was really a, a very strong sign from like the cloud that, that the guy she said, this was so, this is not yeah, yeah, coincidence, but it is uh, Baba shows his presence. And I had many of those moments, big and small, that Baba showed his presence that is, don't worry, no. We, we cannot look on the other side yet. Like uh, if we would be realized on a little deeper level, uh, the space where Ananda Mohimai is in or Babaji was in, they, they, see, they see this drama on the planet from a completely different perspective. And there's a whole other dimension and other realities behind it. And we struggle like little puppies. <laughs> uh, taking our life's job of ashram, taking it very serious, but it's, it's, it's really a joke. We, we should be so relaxed with ourselves, like Baba showed. And it's sometimes very difficult to, to stay very relaxed in it. Another moment, I remember walking through the ashram on the event with Sashiji, and I was worrying about, oh, but tomorrow I don't have enough food. We need more. And he pointed to the guy, look, Pujari, an airplane. And he just completely took my worrying energy away to be in the moment. Just look at this airplane. Your privacy is everywhere. <laughs> what does that have? But I just have faith. No, that is really something, another thing going on. So to stay kind of lighthearted, uh, one way that I'm learning, you just need more faith, Pujari. If I'm in Russia and I feel, well, maybe I'm in the wrong place in the wrong time, no, you're always in the right place at the right time. It's, uh, it's uh, the mind can, can make all these difficulties and it will do that, but it's our sadhana to, to shoot that down almost. Now, don't listen to that. That's really children garden work, puppy work. Just don't listen to this mind. It will not bring much good. It's only moment to moment, everything is okay. This is the plan. This is what I have to surrender to. I love what uh, Vim, uh, what's Arvind's, Arvind's wife, Vandana, what Vandana said in her, one of her satsangs, she said simplicity, the, for her simplicity is to be in the moment. Then, then, then life is really simple. And that's really true. She said truth is consciousness. She realized after many years, Babaji is truth meaning Babaji is consciousness. Very beautiful way to say it. Simplicity means to be in the moment. You can be rich or poor, doesn't matter, but you have to stay in the moment. Then life becomes very simple. And if you learn these two things, then love, you will see, you will experience love. You will live very lovely. <laughs> I love that expression of her, where she said the simplicity is just be in the moment. Don't go one step ahead. And with Baba was the same. Don't think of tomorrow. Don't make plans. It will not come through. It will be different. Just, it's enough. It's enough to just stay with this, this moment. Lovely to have satsang, this moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think when you say have faith, that's the other part of the equation, Jay Shri, for the letting go. It's like there's, there's the opportunity to or, or challenge or experience to let go. But the other side of the letting go is have faith. And together, right. Om Namah Shivai. Yeah. I, I, can I speak? Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, um, you know, I'm, I'm one of the criers. <laughs> True, you know. I mean, all it takes for me is a thought. And um, so uh, I'm a big crier <laughs> for Babaji. And the thing is, is that um, I just want to have my chance to have a little say to you, something to you people because, um, you know, I'm, I'm more of a, like a solitary person. And I kind of knew that even though they're part of me that 
was longing to be in the ashram and just live there, you know, and give people bandages, you know, and stuff like that as a nurse in the clinic and just had Om Namah Shivaya and, and, you know, feel, feel the family that I feel as a part of. It's like, how can I, how can I really be like a part of this family? But, that, but that's how I feel is like, anyway, the point is, is that, uh, you know, I have, I always felt that it was not for me to go and live in ashram, you know, it was for me to be in the world and live, live in the world. And um, so, you know, contrary to Pujari here, you know, I, the second, the first time I went to India, I went by myself and got there and I'm like a big doubting person, all that, but my life began to change. I didn't know where that fit in but really I started to understand all the things that were important to me after you know that moment but I might never have gotten back to India but I remember Toby and and meeting Toby like at the end of that of that trip you know I got introduced him because he gave me money to go somewhere and so you know things developed with, between us and and then he he um, he was like all oh, and he went to Babaji after actually after I went to Babaji and not on my initiation because you know I, I didn't know what the heck was going on. And so uh, he went and of course, you know, he he was in love with Babaji. He got it all immediately, you know, and he's out whatever doing everything. And um, so at one point and just trying to decide whether we even wanted to be a couple. He, he got this inspiration and, and I was starting to think, well, maybe I should go check this Babaji out again, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and he said, uh, I want you to go to India with me in June and we'll ask Babaji to marry us. And I said, and you mean if he said, no, we won't have to do it? And, and he said, yes, you know? Well, that sounded like a pretty interesting <laughs> kind of bet your life, you know, for. And so, you know, we had, I mean, everything has a story, as you all know, how you got there is, you know, is, a, is always a great story, but I'm skipping over so much of the story. But anyway, and um, um, we, we, got, we got there to India and, and we got there to Babaji in front of Babaji. And what he, the first thing he says is, you two married? <laughs> and Toby says, no, Babaji, we came to ask you tomorrow morning, eight o'clock. <laughs> and, and that started the great learning of my you know of my life was my relationship to Toby you know so how how to surrender over and over and over again and how to love another person how to help you know how to accept yourself with another person I mean I, I cannot tell you how many how many lessons I learned from Toby you know until you know the, the final time when he died and I had surrendered everything I was taking care of every aspect of his life you know and all there was was just love between us and in the beginning and believe me I had not wanted to surrender to Toby you know even though I had even though I had known that this was proper for me to be marrying him there there wasn't a doubt about it even though it didn't look like you know the person you would pick to marry because you're like so madly in love it was it was way bigger than that and um so I just had to, I just had to, you know, put up my hand for, you know, the other part, which was getting married and, and what that can mean. And, and, and then, I, you know, I'm just, I'm just taking my little platform here for a minute because, because I don't get, you know, I don't, I don't get involved so much, but I am involved and, and, um, I'm like a part of you. You're a part of me. I was there at the beginning, you know, Chris told me they, they were, they were, they were creating crystal on my kitchen table and I was cooking for them. And, and you know, all this was happening there. And, uh, but I'm always like in the background, whatever. But anyway, I, but the thing that where I wanted to get to was um, by, you know, I, I did, I still didn't get it about Babaji, you know, and, and I didn't get why like everybody is like having to tell everybody about it because you know, and I realized like, oh, I don't really love him. You know, I, I didn't see him. I didn't see who he was, but I don't really love him. So it makes sense that I can't tell people like that. And so that's just the way I am. I have to admit it. And so I did admit it. And then I, I took Shastra Jesus advice. I mean, I was doing the arty every day. It was like 
just to show that there was something more important than eating. And I was having like love flowing down for me. I had the love in my life everywhere. And I, I didn't still didn't understand, you know, where Babaji fit. And so then I started like meditating on, on his feet, like Shastraji had told me, you know, because I was sitting with a group of people asking, having their palms read and saying, how can I advance myself spiritually? And so I asked myself, how can I advance myself spiritually? Just because everybody else was doing it, you know? And, and, um, and he, he said, uh, meditate on Babaji's feet. So I did. And then, you know, there's this picture of him like leaning back in the pink and, and there was his, his feet and the, love started pouring out of the feet all over me. And that was the moment that I fell in love with Mataji, you know? And so there hasn't been a moment after that that I've not been in love with Babaji. And the interesting thing is, I don't feel it as Babaji loves me, you know? I feel that whatever Babaji is, you know, he is the, this vastness of love and beingness and whatever he is, which I can't even really tell you, but I can feel it, you know, but the thing that's transforming, that transforms me is I look at him and the love pours out to him, you know, from, from me. And um, it's just, anyway, that's that part. But, but the other part is that, that, that even, even after that, you know, <laughs> and I went and then I, then when I went back to the ashram again, and it's like, okay, yeah, everything is different. I can see him now. I can see him in connection with everything in the world when I see him, you know, it's like, I was completely blind before that. And, um, and so that, anyway, that has never gone. So, and, and I was never, well, not being, you know, not getting it. I was never one of those to say like, oh, here's my money. Oh, what should I do? And, you know, what, what should I, I, I was never that kind of person. And um, so I didn't. <laughs> I learned my lessons, you know, privately. <laughs> plenty, plenty of lessons and letting go lessons and all those kind of things. But, but um, so on that particular trip, the second trip, we, we ended up just the, just, the two of us really and Nirmal and and Nirmal back in um, you know wherever I can't remember the name of it but some place that he had told no devotees to go and um, so we got there and we said oh well, we'll leave you know and he said no you stay and so we were like on the head of the pecking order as I call it you know <laughs> it's like we got to be with Babaji otherwise we were you know we were peons or just lost in the ground so I was having like this huge healing of, of who I was and, and what was going on and who I was socially. And, and so, so then I was more interested in trying out, what should I do and stuff like that. So we we're back at the ashram, he's in the garden and he's, you know, talking, he's talking Ram, he's saying Ram, Ram, chant the name of Ram, you know. <laughs> and um, so I got to, the, to my, my point and I said, well, oh, and I know he'd been talking about uh, me and, and the doctor in the clinic saving everybody's lives, how we were saving everybody's lives. Well, you know, we weren't saving anybody's lives, right? <laughs> I was cleaning up things and, and putting band-aids on or something. And, and so I thought, well, maybe I'm supposed to do that and not go on this trip with him in the next day. And, and so I said, well, you know, should I stay here in the clinic and not go on this trip? And he said to me, he said, Ram, Ram, chant the name of Ram. In the name of Ram, you are free, as you like. He didn't tell me what to do. And, and, and it was like, right, I am not a person to be told what to do. I have to decide what to do. And I have to be who I am. And, and that's, it was such like, I don't know, just really validation for who I am and what, what I was doing. So, you know, that's maybe enough <laughs> to kind of get to me where, where I really want to be with you guys because I'm not meant to live in an ashram, even though like, I'm so happy just being there and, you know, making food for people and doing whatever happens to be done. But it's like, no, I don't really get to do that this life. I have to, you know, try and, figure out the rest of it and try and be true simplicity and love and you know remember Babaji and the other connections that I have with whatever and 
anyway, thank you guys for giving me my little chance to talk. I'm so grateful I got here today. So thank exactly. you. Beautiful. Just hearing, you know, just just whatever I've gotten in on on the other little stories, you know, I just hear hear you people talking about Babaji and your experience and everything, and believe me, I'm crying from the beginning to the end, you know, because you you all like exude this energy and this experience with you wherever you go, you know, it's just. It's just so lovely. I I love I love you all, and I, I feel a part of your family, whether whether I'm coming to any event or not, you know. So, but okay, let me just tell you one more thing. <laughs> I, I I had the opportunity of going to Campbell Hot Springs uh, with Leonard, and uh, doing being the pujari, and um, doing the arti every morning, and. It was it was a great experience. I, I really enjoyed it and uh, learned the arty and I don't know I learned so much by being Pujari and you know having being the, the one person singing with two people the arty. But anyway, and sometime after that, you know, and after Babaji had died and just trying to trying to deal with all that, um, I had a dream, and in the dream I had my you know little lamp and looking for where I should go to Artie. And Babaji was there and he said, no, no. He said, don't do Artie anymore. It's not time for doing Artie. And what he did was he had me sit on his feet with him like totally up there behind me. And, you know, us both facing there in the same direction. So anyway, I just, it was a dream, but I just wanted to share that too with you while I had my platform. <laughs> okay, now, thank you. Thank you. Catherine, thank you. thank you for getting on. I know I asked you months ago and you said you didn't think it was important enough, but it's beautiful and this is your family. And I invite you to come on every time. Yeah, and I think about you all the time. And I've got two harmoniums that I want to give to you. <laughs> So maybe soon. <laughs> That'd be good. But mostly I'm saying that even if you live far away and, you know, more on your own, but this is a forum that we've now set up where we can be family together, even though we're far apart. So mm -hmm. take advantage of that so that you have that love and support and, yeah. and, and thank you for sharing your beauty. And thank you so much. And, you know, I want to tell you something else. I've got my chance to speak. And that is, you know, it's really, it's really rather intimate, but I think it's, I think it's somewhat important really, is that, you know, I am a person that's like learned to appreciate and love men over my life, you know, and being, a, from being afraid of men and mad and everything, you know, as, as I was raised, but over, but through time, through many different experiences, I've learned to love the opposite sex, you know, and, and be on their side and um, to, um, uh, well, you know, I was rebirthing, you rebirth, you're just rebirthing a baby, no matter what sex they are, you know what I mean? But it's that I had, the first night I was in ashram that first time, I had sex with somebody in the storeroom underneath Babaji's uh, hair, you know, and it's like, you don't do that. But I didn't know anything. I was just comforting this guy who'd been told to leave the next day, you know, and that I was traveling with, you know, that I had that kind of relationship with. So I was comforting him, whatever. And then, then the next day he went off to his thing and whatever. I, I didn't feel guilty. I didn't feel anything. I mean, I, I felt whatever. <laughs> and, but looking back at it, then then when I got my, sh my head shaved, ultimately, Babaji moved me into a room all by myself. I'd been up in the room with the women, you know, in the early, early place. This was like 1980, uh, 79. And anyway, I'd been in, in the room with everybody else. He moved me down into another room all by myself. Nobody in that room. And I had my head shaved, right? So I had my hair gone. I had my femininity gone, really, you know. And later that day, two men, good looking guys from you know, Sweden or somewhere, were put in the room with me, you know, 
And that just was not done, right? But in looking back on it and, and I think about it and then what all that I learned about having from having my head shaved about where my beauty came from, where my being came from, it wasn't in hair, just the whole thing and having, I don't know, I could, I don't know, I could go on and on and on, you know, what that meant to have my head shaved even. But it, it all fit in with all of my issues, you know, and all the things I needed to know to, to grow. And, um, you know, it's just deals with everything. That's it. Thank you. Maybe, so much. <laughs> Maybe I'll give up Josh now. <laughs> okay, thank you. Kathleen, thanks. I think uh, Bhava's has always been teaching us to make the whole world an ashram. Anyway. Yeah, so that's what I thought. You're just in the world, you know? That's what I thought. Because really, you know, for me, I mean, actually, Babaji gave me a name because I told, I mean, because I felt like Herakon was heaven on earth and that it was my job to make heaven on earth wherever I was. And, um, and that first time that I actually had interaction with Babaji and, you know, it was on the, on the other side and we're looking at the water and he said, you know, you like it here? <laughs> and like, oh yeah, I love the water, you know? So the next day he gives me a, a, a name and it's Saruli. And it's like such a beautiful name. And they tell me what it means. It's like the sacred river that washes away the sins of the world. And it's like, oh my God, such a beautiful name. I love it. But you know what? Nobody had ever heard of that name. Nobody knew that it was a beautiful name. Nobody knew what it meant. And, and I was like, yeah, this is the perfect name for me. The person that's like completely hidden from everybody and nobody knows. And so I, I came to love this name because of its hidden, hiddenness and, and truth for me but not its, you know, outward appearance because I, I didn't need that outward appearance. <laughs> and, and, and then later when, uh, after Babaji had died and I don't remember the, the, um, um, the you know, uh, the other holy man that came and stayed in our house and he, he was singing and-, and 15 minutes. Are we done? No, 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 sorry. Oh, okay, okay. Please go anyway, Anyway, he'd, he'd come to our house. He was, he, he'd been singing, singing and, and then came to eat and he saw a piece of paper with uh, an envelope with, you know, um, Modi and Saruli Singh on it. And he said, oh, Saruli, the sacred river that washes away the sins of the world. I was just singing about her. And I'm like, oh my God, nobody's ever heard this name. He said, it's the name that the hill people use. Mm. And that's what I loved was the hill people nice. and singing with the hill people and being with the hill people at the ashram. So I found out, you know, you just, you just keep finding out what, what happened as the years go by, <laughs> you know, what you've been told. And anyway, that's, that's just another little story. So I am actually Saruli Singh after Toby, <laughs> Modi Singh. <laughs> So anyway, okay. <laughs> Thanks. Sir. Stop me, stop me. <laughs> We're also getting, does anybody else want to share or ask a question? It is getting toward the end of our two hours together. I want to share something. Mm -hmm. um, can you hear me? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Because, um, yeah, it's something in my heart and I feel after what I hear now, it's inspiring to share. And um, it's one story in the ashram and it's long back. It was during Navaratri um, in Herakan. And I, I got an amazing room on the Gufa site and I was with the Italian girls and I felt like family with Italians. Everybody thought I was Italian. And it's not in the time of Babaji because I never met him in real it's i think in 2015 i don't know, remember and everything was amazing and i i was in an amazing room with people that i loved and the navaratri was good and then everybody left 
and I felt like space and I had a nice karma yoga job and with Gorari and, and yeah, the long story short, a man that I was in love with came and he plays Banzuri in the Indian classical music. <laughs> he's Italian. And I, I thought, you know, it's, it's a sign of Babaji that he's going to be my husband. And uh, people saw us and they say, oh, are you married and all? And so I had this amazing room. I was happy in the ashram. I was doing my little karma yoga. <laughs> I could practice in the room. And then he was bored and he said, I want to leave the ashram and I want to go to Almora and I want to practice by my own. And then I say, okay, I, I go with you. I leave everything. So I had a lot of baggage. <laughs> with, I took everything a few days later, arrive at the chai shop to take the taxi to leave the ashram. And we lived with uh, Sabine and a few other people to go to Aldwani. And uh, in the car, he was already saying, I'm feeling sick. I'm not sure. I don't know what I have. And he was only talking with the other girls. He was ignoring me completely. And then we get in Aldwani and he was like, I don't want to go. Actually, I want to go back to the ashram. And I was like very sad in my heart because I was making plans and I was excited that I get out somehow and practice with someone and um, music. And then we get on to take the bus to Almora and then he, the bus was broken. And then he said, okay, we go back to the ashram. And I was very sad. <laughs> and we took one, we found a taxi. We went back to the ashram. We arrived just at the RT. And it's like, mm, how to say, after that, I had to take all the baggage back to baggage, go to Gufa site, find my room. But for me, it's been always lessons like this. In Baba Ji Ashram, a lot of with interactions with what I, <laughs> with like, um, mm, if I am not going in the direction, like only for Baba Ji, and I would leave it, you know, to go for somebody I fall in love or, and then something like this would happen again and again and again. <laughs> And I mean, I still think it's continuing. I'm still thinking maybe I have a life of solitude or I have to be only with Babaji. I, I, because I'm not married yet. And I wish <laughs> I share it with you all from my heart. I feel sad when I say it. But yeah, it's also a lesson that deeply, I had everything, I was happy, I was doing my work, I leave it and I had to come back to the ashram somehow and then work on a lot of things. So that's what I wanted to share. Jayashree, were you with Vijaya and Alice? I don't Is even remember them. Oh. I've Are lost you? memory a lot, but they were amazing, nice, a little bit older than me one, and another I don't remember also, but we were in such a big room. And when they left, I had this room for myself with two rooms, actually. That's because my that's house. My. Uh, that's the house I built. <laughs> yeah. And there was a kitchen, even. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, well, I love my stuff in the cupboard, but I don't have coffee when I arrive if I don't lock it. <laughs> hmm. Welcome. I'm glad you stayed there. I've had many beautiful, beautiful experiences in there. Mm. But for day three, to, just to add a little bit, uh, I've, I've always often remember the words from Muniraji. He said, uh, to be a devotee of Bhavati, it's uh, important that you learn to be alone. And mm. it's also very important that you learn to function in family, in a family life. Mm. And it's important that you can function in an ashram, in a, in a big family function and have your balance if you're alone, if you're in a family, or if you're in the ashram. If you manage to find your balance in all the three of them, then you've done a great practice for to become human. That's like a great opportunity uh, to, and we don't know what's our destiny. Once this comes along, that comes along, but we are learning these different modalities, you can say. Uh, we don't have to be all our life alone. That's with, with my life definitely also happening. I, I love to be alone. And at the moment, I'm quite in a, uh, a loner experience. Uh, 
which is very beautiful. But these words came to me to add from it. It's, it's perfect and beautiful. If you go to phases of being on your own, that's a big learning process to carry yourself uh, so intensely to, as, as, a, as a monk or as a sadhu, however you want to call it, but just to carry yourself when you're alone, that everything is fine. And in other situations, there are other challenges. No? You have to carry a family or take care of your mom or take care of your sister uh, who left the body. It's like there's always different dimensions that to take care of an ashram is a whole other dimension. Ask Ram Loti how, what it is to do that part of sadhana. But it's all somehow destiny that we're learning these three modalities, either be alone, either function in a family, and we're getting them all three to learn. So it's it's what I wanted to to share in this satsang. Uh, how beautiful it is, our fullness of life. Yeah. yeah, that's that's really true. And to become adept in all those phases of our lives. And and because it's easy to have faith in Babaji. It's the easiest thing in the world. We have to have faith in ourselves too. You know, we have to have faith in our, in everyone around us. Right. We have to, and sometimes it, that's much harder. It's still that's a beautiful one. Yeah. We have faith in ourselves. That is. Uh... Yeah. Then things become simple. Guys, I have to run, but much love and have a beautiful week. And uh, I'll see you next Saturday. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Jari. Thank you, Hirman. Thank you, everybody. Not much. Yeah. yeah. And love, love, love. One, one hour earlier. One hour. It's yeah. same link, but one hour earlier, and it'll be a low banner. Oh, before you go, I oh, thought oh. since you're the puppy person, you might, I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> yes, I can. Ah, with a puppy. <laughs> oh, how beautiful. <laughs> I have to tell you guys, I found a puppy in Heracon and he had a cut and he was bleeding and I love animals. So I was taking care of him and Babaji came along and said, get rid of that dog. And I looked at him and I thought, no, I'm not going to get rid of the dog. <laughs> and I took it to my room and I hid it. And I nursed it back to health. And then he caught me a few days later with a puppy. And he said, I told you to get rid of that dog. And, and this villager was coming and he said, take the dog. And the villager took the dog and went off. I was so mad. I was so mad at him for that. But again, letting go. Om Namah Shivaya. <laughs> okay, maybe that dog's gonna have a great life with that guy. I don't know, but uh, what could I do? I mean, at least I nursed him back to health before he got given away. But anyway, so I was, that's a puppy story with Babaji that didn't go so good for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's puppy, where you have to hear this guy, oh, guy to you, okay. A puppy story where Baba was in, I don't know, somewhere in the Kirtan Hall and he had a little puppy. And he called me over and I was sitting with him and he, he was picking, I guess, fleas out of it. And he told me, day by day, this is your duty to pick fleas, dog. And I, I'd have to say, I don't have a lot of relationship with dogs. And I, <laughs> I never saw that dog again, so I didn't quite know. But anyways, that's my puppy story with Babaji. <laughs> day by day, you do it. Anyway, but... Let's thank everybody. Thank you, Hiraman and um, Pujari and Gayatri and our special surprise guests, Kathleen and Jay Shri and all the people that have asked questions. Um, it's a rich time. And thank you all for being here. We'll see you next thank week. You. Thank you for all the stories. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ramlo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.